Good evening, Spartans. I'm Rob Miller, Superintendent of Rixby Public Schools. Thank you, first of all, for those in the audience here today, and then all of you who are joining us via our live stream as well. We thank you for joining this conversation. This is an important discussion about the future of Rixby Public Schools, and we're glad that you're participating in that. Obviously, the reason for this is to present our next bond proposal, which will be on Tuesday, just 13 days away, February 8th. And so obviously we're encouraging everyone out, everyone to get out and to vote on that day because the projects we're gonna talk about today really do have an important piece in the future in accomplishing our mission here in Victory Public Schools. So we're gonna start with how do you get more information? Because today I'm not gonna have adequate time to really get into the weeds about some of the proposals. So this is our landing page on the Bixby Bonds. You can find this pretty easily. It's got the video that we're going to show here in just a second. But everything that I am sharing tonight will be on this website so you can go back and review, look at some of the details. And if you have questions, please reach out to me or a member of my team and we will get back with you before the election to answer those questions. So Kevin, if you'll show that video first, that'll kick us off. Thank you. Thanks to community support for the 2016 bond issue, Bixby Schools has taken the first steps towards the future for our students. As our district continues to grow, it's time to finish what we started. The 2022 bond will fund further innovation across the district without raising school taxes. And in 10 years, when Betty is a student at Bixby High School, we want to make sure that our vision for students has come alive, for this to be a place where students can learn, excel, and own their future. By the year 2028, our graduating class size is projected to increase by 35%. A new high school academic building will make room for this growth while fostering innovative education to serve our students today and into the future. This expansion will include a collaboration cafe, genius bar, outdoor learning environment, and modern technology throughout. Elementary enrollment growth continues to be very strong across our district, particularly here south of the river. For that reason, we plan on adding additional classrooms here on our new west campus, as well as a dedicated gym and safe room at our East Intermediate Campus. This bond will fund improvements at all of our elementary and intermediate campuses in the district, as well as updates to the existing high school buildings, transportation facilities, and other operational spaces. As Bixby moves into the largest class of high schools in Oklahoma, this bond will provide our athletes the resources they need and allow Spartan Athletics to host larger competitions. You guys get out of here. Stadium and athletic facility upgrades, a new Spartan training complex, and a new ninth grade practice gym will give our athletes a competitive advantage. As part of our partnership with Bixby Public Schools, the city of Bixby will also have a bond proposal on the February 8th ballot. We'll be asking the community to support the construction of a $43 million state-of-the-art performing arts center in downtown Bixby. This facility will not only serve as a resource for fine arts students and Bixby schools, but will also bring in new experiences and events that our community are looking for. The district is working closely with the city of Bixby on the design and development of a new performing arts center. From kindergarten Christmas programs to high school band concerts, this facility will support all things fine arts at Bixby Public Schools. As both a Bixby parent and CEO of the Bixby Venture Chamber, I recognize our public schools are the heart of our community. And what benefits our schools also benefits economic development and improves quality of life for our families. At Bixby Schools, we're building an extraordinary future together. I think in just that three minute video, you can see why we are so excited about this bond issue and what it will mean to Bixby Public Schools and our entire community over the next five to 10 years. Our, our presentation today 
You can link here on this QR code, like I said, if you're watching from home, this is easy to get just from the Bixby PS website. Click on Bixby Bonds. You can access this presentation. But if you want to come back later, look at some of the detailed information that I'll be sharing with you quickly tonight, then you'll be fully informed about the bond issue. So let's go to the next slide, please. These next two slides really just discuss the process. And the question I heard a couple times is, when do you start planning for a bond issue? And the honest answer for that is the day after the last bond issue passed. Because the Bixby schools, our growth rate is so high that we have to constantly be looking ahead, trying to catch up, making sure that we have the capacity for student growth, as well as providing high quality educational spaces and athletic and fine arts facilities for all of our students. So this is a long-term process. What you're hearing today is the result of a series of committee meetings that we had in the fall. We brought together 65 stakeholders, administrators, teachers, parents, students, who all were involved in helping us develop this list of projects that we're presenting to you tonight. So I want to thank all of those members for their time and energy in being part of this important process. But a couple things on this slide I want to point your attention to. On number two, talks about our vision. So as we talk about our bond issue and where we want to go in the three public schools, our vision, our strategic plan become increasingly important. So let's go to the next slide, and you can see again, right there in the center, our vision development. I'm a firm believer that whenever we make any decisions in Big Street Public Schools, we need to run it through the lens of our strategic plan to make sure we're aligned with what the goals, wishes, and vision of this community truly are. And a capital project or facilities project should also be viewed through that same lens. Because we want to make sure that every dollar that we spend of your tax dollars goes towards supporting that vision moving forward. So the next slide shows our strategic plan on a page. There's obviously a lot more to it. But we spent a lot of time starting in 2018 looking at what was really important in Bixby Public Schools to prepare our students for a world that is very different than the one many of us grew up in. So when you look up here in our motto, the Spartan Way, learn well, live with honor, our mission, which is what our purpose is every single day, the reason that teachers and support staff and administrators come to work, our district staff is focused on igniting the potential of every student. And then our future vision, looking at becoming a place where every single student who walks our hallways feels empowered to learn, excel, and own their future. Those aren't just catchwords. That's our mission and vision, and we hold it very seriously. So on the bottom, you'll see the five areas that we're focused on. But the reason I bring this up in the context of a bond proposal is this really is what drives our vision. For many years in public education, we've been focused on the wrong things. So when you look at the next slide, starting with passage of No Child Left Behind in 2002, this has been in the forefront. This is what every teacher's looked at. This is how schools, been, schools have been graded and graded. And teacher evaluations have even been tied to test scores. How do students perform on once a year state community testing? Sometimes we are tricky with the wording, we call it student achievement, but what we're really talking about for those that push test scores is how do those kids do on those tests? Don't mishear me. I'm not saying we don't want our students to perform well on state mandated testing. In Dixie, that's one of our sources of pride. Our students have always done uh, well, relatively, compared to other districts of a similar demographic as us. We're proud of that. 
And we know our teachers work extremely hard to get us to that point and to help prepare those students for those assessments. But that can't be our focus moving forward. So what I want to show you here as this graphic changes, notice what happens with test scores. And you may, be able, you may not be able to see this well at home. It's still there. It's just pushed to the background. And the things that it was obscuring are now in the forefront. Critical thinking, teamwork, curiosity, student agency, engagement, innovation, joy of learning, all of those critical pieces. Some might call those soft skills. I call them essential ingredients for success in the 21st century. And if we're not spending time focusing on those elements of learning, then we're not preparing kids for the world they're about to enter. And the next slide shows, this is from a, a, a recent study, 65% of students, like Betty, who you just saw up there a few minutes ago, of the jobs that they will fill don't exist today. So there'll still be a need for teachers and architects. We've got some of those folks in the audience with us today, and lawyers and doctors, and many of the same occupations we have now. But there'll also be a need for jobs that we don't even know what they'll be. So how do you prepare young people to fill those jobs? It goes back to the slide preceding this one. Making sure that they're lifelong learners, that they're creative, that they're curious, that they understand the importance of critical thinking and analysis and communication. So that's how our focus has changed. Now what does that have to do with the bond issue? Well, we need to make sure that every educational space we create, every building we design, has that in mind. To make sure that those spaces are places where teachers have the resources, the equipment, and the structure to set up learning to foster the development of those traits. Here's the other reason. Let's go to the next slide. This is also what is pushing this bond issue. If you look across this chart from 12th grade, last year's graduating class had 430 students. This year's is about 460. Look at the seventh grade class, which we are first group of sophomores in the new high school academic building. That class will be over 600 by the time we start school next year. And if you track it all the way back, the third grade class is also very close to 600 already. That's a 25% growth from one class to the next as you look over just a couple of years. And that's the kind of growth that we're experiencing at Bixby. We grow 700 students since May of last year. Now, COVID has distorted some of that enrollment growth, but it's, it's real. And then we know there are rooftops going up all over our town, and more people want to come to Bixby to live and raise their families. Next slide. I'm going to go through these very quickly, but you can look at them at home. This is the results of a 2011 demographic study that was done for the district. And at that time, we had a little over 5,000 students. Not that long ago, 2011. Today, we've got over 7,400. If you take out pre-K, it's about 7,054. The numbers on the bottom show where that demographic study predicted our enrollment would be. Somewhere between 6,000 and 7,000. So based on the, the 2011 demographic study, we've exceeded that growth rate. So what we did in 2018 on the next slide was have them come back out and give us updated numbers. Again, focus on the bottom line. You can see that they predicted our growth would be between 69.11 and about 72.70. So now we're right in the middle of that growth. But that is, reflects anyway, the growth that we know is going to continue to happen in Bixby School. So let's look at this next one which gives predictions for the 
2029 school year. So the red box on the left shows where we are today. The blue box on the right shows where we're projected to be. Between 8,500 and 9,200. So let's look at that on a table on the next slide. And look at the bottom lines. Again, remember 2011, we're at 5,000. By 2028, we're projected to be 9,000. The biggest growth, if you look at the top two lines, are high school and middle school. Because these smaller classes are graduating and the larger classes are matriculating up and will occupy those classrooms. Before we leave this slide, I want you to look at these two lines where it says Central Elementary and West Elementary. This study was done before West existed. So that study simply predicted the amount of growth south of the river. And on this chart, if you add those numbers on the end, projected growth, elementary and intermediate, south of the river is about 340 students between now in 2028-29. We'll come back to that here in a second. Next slide. This was the first of several bond issues that were really focused on big speed and mastering our capacity for growth. This was in 2010. Some of you out there in the community uh, probably voted on this bond issue. At the time, $60 million was a lot of money. Still a lot of money, but not compared to where we are today. Well, when you look at these projects, it doesn't seem that long ago. Bixby Middle School, that first building, was on the 2010 bond issue. The first phase of the ninth grade was on that bond issue. The renovation of the middle school into Central Intermediate was on that bond issue. And then the first phase of the development at Northeast, which is now East, was on that as well. So we have been working on trying to stay ahead of this growth for many years. So in 2016, the district came back to you and asked for $142 million because the growth was so strong that we now needed to add. We added the West Campus. 155,000 square feet. That was based on estimates of growth, and we know now that we need to add classrooms already there. We added phase two of the high school, which was another 80,000 square feet to accommodate that growth. The ninth grade got a second building. East Intermediate was built so that we could have separate buildings they're connected with a separate building for the students in grades four through six. So what you can see from these first two bond issues is a real focus on making sure we've got enough classrooms to hire teachers to serve the students that we have. Then we're also looking at other needs, site improvements, central elementary and central intermediate. We wanted to make sure that we weren't ignoring those schools here. We want to make sure that every child has access to a high quality education in a great building. So we've invested close to $5 million in renovating those buildings. New furniture, new paint, new HVAC systems, playgrounds, new drop-off areas. We've renovated some classrooms to update them for students with special needs. We've invested a lot of money in bringing those buildings up and keeping them as viable learning environments. We've also built a three and a half million dollar gaming facility that is state of the art. On the next slide, you'll see some of the athletic upgrades that we've done. A new turf on our stadium, a new turf for baseball, softball, a new track. We added money into our pool, which was in uh, a state of repair, and we've invested a lot to bring all of those facilities up. But we've got work to do. I'm the first to admit it. We're now in 6A1 with the larger school districts 
and our athletic facilities were built when we were a 5A school district or before. So we've got a lot of work left to do when it comes to athletics, fine arts, and those things. The next slide, these items are on every bond issue. We need to purchase new buses. Every year we purchase typically three to five new buses to replace older vehicles in our fleet. We need to make sure that we're staying ahead of land purchases so that if we need to build a new school in the future, that we have been able to secure the right location for that. Instructional technology. All of our students in grades seven through 12 are now one-to-one -one with an assigned device that they have until they graduate from Bixby schools. And then our technology department, all the infrastructure that goes into maintaining a high quality technology system. So the next slide will show you just in one picture where we were with the 2016 bond. Everything in green has been completed. The only two items left from 2016, we haven't even sold bonds for these items yet, but the track locker rooms, we're looking at breaking ground this summer to build those out of the existing track complex. And then over here, phase one of the high school academic building. The next two bonds are accumulating money to help us get started on this high school academic building. So what this bond will do is bring the rest of the money forward so that we can build this school all at once rather than over a period of time. Next slide, please. So here's our priorities. As I've said a couple times already, we need to make sure that we're staying ahead of that growth curve and that we've got places to serve our students. We also need to make sure that we're investing in our existing facilities, making sure that we keep them painted, that we've got HVAC systems, that the flooring is good, and that we have equity across the district so that no one feels like they're being shortchanged. We need to ensure that our students have access to high quality facilities, not only for athletics, but fine arts, places to perform and pursue their passion in in arts, and then supporting the key goals of our strategic plan. So let's look at some of the exciting things that are gonna happen with this bond issue. On the left side, you'll see those areas for growth. You'll see a high school academic building. We're gonna talk about that here in just a second. We're gonna add 20 classrooms at our west campus. It was designed for growth. We knew we were gonna have to add on. So that will give us about 500 spaces for additional students. Remember the 340 I asked you to remember a few minutes ago? So these classrooms will sustain our growth south of the river through at least the end of this decade because we still have capacity at Central Elementary and Central Intermediate. So that's good news in that now we're finally caught up when it comes to elementary classrooms and we can spend some money on some much needed uh, renovations at the secondary level. We're also gonna put a new gym at East Intermediate. We didn't do that last time, just due to lack of money. But we're gonna add that, that's an instructional gym. And then as you work your way across, you can see some of the upgrades. We're gonna be touching every single site with this bond issue. Making sure, again, that every site is kept up to standard. Adding sidewalk awnings, that was an issue that came up in our bond planning committees because we've got several schools that don't have those. In the drop-off and the bus lanes don't have those awnings, we can add those at every site. On the athletics and fine arts, moving to 6A1, we know when Jinx and Broken Arrow and Union and Owasso come to Bixby, we're going to need to have increased capacity for that. So we're going to have to do this in phases because we don't have enough resources to do it all at once. But we are adding seating as early as this summer. We're going to renovate our concession area. And then six years from now, we'll probably come back with another bond issue to add, probably tear down the entire home stand and renovate that with new press boxes, those sorts of things, and increase capacity as we continue to grow in enrollment. 
Other athletic upgrades, a ninth grade practice gym, upgrades to our baseball, softball, wrestling, every athletic program. We know we need to invest in our locker rooms and our spaces for students and coaches. We're going to do that with this bond issue. The Spartan Training Complex is a two-phase process where we are going to build new locker rooms, uh, coaches' offices, film rooms, with the, uh, with the goal of, in 2028, coming back and getting the funding to build an indoor practice facility that will be used not only by football, but will be able to be used by band, by baseball, softball, cheer, and a lot of different groups in Bixby. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide, because this is the exciting part. Since March of last year, our district team has been working with our partners at KKT. We have some of those individuals in the audience here today, and that holds construction. This is a very involved process. We are now meeting every single week, even before the bond passes, so that we're ready to hit the ground running as soon as we have the resources to go. This is a current rendering. This is not exactly what it will look like, but this is where we are in that planning process right now. You can tell by the location, it's just south of the stadium. If you're familiar with our high school campus, there was Studio B, the maintenance building, just to the west of our pool, that's where the footprint of this new building will be. We're looking at a 200,000 square foot, three-story building that will accommodate all of our high school students through at least 2034, if not longer. We'll take a couple other pictures. That would be the entrance coming in from the west side. Next one. This is looking towards the southeast from the stadium. A unique feature of this that we are planning right now is a little uh, plaza area that will uh, be accessible before games, kind of a place to hang out, uh, where we can have our armory or our Spartan merchandise, and just a place that's more secluded and safer for our students now. That's one of the challenges with our high school campus now is there are so many ways to get in and out. This new building will provide additional security and will close off so that, that parking lot in the center will now be turned into uh, either building or green space for outdoor learning and for students to, to be. Next one. This is looking back towards the west bus loop over on the right hand side. This is looking back towards the northwest. The building over on the left side is the math and science building that will be connected to that. We'll also be renovating that building as well as the west wing so that those buildings uh, have classrooms, same furniture, same structure as the new building will have. If you want to take a better tour of this, this QR code will take you to a kind of a 3D where you can view with your phone and you can walk around the building and see what this looks like from different angles. But again, I'm not going to hold this up here very long, but uh, later on, if you want to take a look at that, you've got a little button that allows you to do a gyro, look at that landscape, and you can really get a pretty good feel for where this building is going to be and just how large a project this is going to be. Here's the good news. We hope to break ground as soon as school ends this year and have this facility ready for students in August of 24. Now we know we can't promise things anymore with COVID and the crazy things going on in our world, but that's our goal. It's very ambitious. And I know NACOLTS and KKT, they're right with us. And we're, we've got a high level of confidence that we'll get this done, but that's how quickly we're going to turn this around. So this year's seventh, eighth, and ninth graders will be the first three grades in this new high school academic building. Next slide, please. So what's this mean on taxes? Again, I don't want to get into the weeds on this. 
These charts are available in the presentation, so you can look at it. Generally speaking, if you live in the Bixby City limits and the Bixby School District limits, on your property taxes, you have a millage rate of about 131 mills. It's broken down, about 57% of that goes to your school taxes, the school general fund, the building fund. And then you'll notice that there's something called a sinking fund levy. That's what the bond issue is. So as we sell bonds at the school district, we use those sinking fund levies to pay those bonds at all. Whoever purchased those bonds, we have to pay them off over a two or three year period. Then you see all the other taxes, your county taxes, your health department, Tulsa Community College, the library, the general fund for the county. Those add up to about 43.8 mills. And then the third item, if you live in the city of Bixby, is a millage rate of about 12.8 mills right now that you pay for the city. And that's for their sinking fund, again, for construction projects and service of debt. On the right hand side, you can see where we compare. So if you are in Bixby School District, or you live in James, we've got some families that do that. The millage rate's a little bit less at 130. But if you live on the north side and you have a Tulsa address, if you're in the Bixby School District, you can pay as much as 138 or 139 mills. So let's go to the next slide. This is how your taxes are computed. So I'm not gonna, again, go into the details on this, but on a $100,000 value property, 11% assessment ratio, take away your homestead exemption, and then you multiply that number times the millage rate, which is a 1,000, and that gives you your taxes. So $100,000 property would generally yield a property tax bill of about $1,300. There's a lot of factors that affect that, so that's just an estimate. If you would like to find out how your taxes, you can go to the website on this page. This is on the Tulsa County Assessor's page. There is a tax calculator. You can put in the assessed value of your home, put in your school district, in your city, and you can calculate a good estimate for what your taxes will be on there. Next slide, please. So I know that there are people here in the audience and at home saying, what will this do to our taxes? And what we always say is that our goal is to keep our millage rate level. We don't ever want to come to you unless it's an emergency to actually raise that millage rate. Right now, property owners in Bixby, Bixby schools, pay about 34 mills for that sinking fund levy. On the top chart, you'll see what happens over time if this bond issue doesn't pass. So the current bond, 2016, will start running out in 2627. The military goes down a little bit, and then the next year it goes away. Now I know there are some saying, isn't that a good thing? We don't have to pay those taxes anymore. Well, here's the bottom line. All of the projects I just talked about, we just can't do any of them without an additional uh, fund. So this bond, if you look at the bottom, for the next three years after 26, 27, 28, 29, and I know you can't see this very well at home, we'll keep that 34 mills, and then it will plateau back down to about 17, 16 mills for the five years after. What will likely happen is in 2028, there'll be another bond issue, Again, to address growth, make sure that we're finishing the projects that you have told us are important, and that millage rate will just sustain itself for a little bit longer. And that's the way Bixby has done their bond issues over time. So 2010, 2016, now 2022, and then likely in 2028. That's the price that we need to have in order to have the high quality facilities our kids deserve and that will help prepare them for their lives. Next one, please. Now, I know I saw Jared Cottle walk in a little bit ago, I think. Uh, he's our city manager, so he can probably talk to this a little bit more. 
This is a unique partnership that we have been working with the city over the past few years to develop a plan to construct a new performing arts center in downtown Bixby. Now here's the win-win for us. As a school district, our projects are the ones I just presented to you. This is not going to be on the Bixby school ballot. It will be on the city of Bixby ballot. So if you don't have a Bixby address, you're not going to have the opportunity to vote on this one. You will be able to vote on the school bond. But this bond issue will be a city bond. If you remember what I told you about the middle drift of the city right now, it's about 13. It's going to go up to about 17.9, I believe. And the financial planners for the city mean will say that that's about 45, 46 dollars on a $100,000 home annually in terms of property taxes. I know, again, it's more money. Taxes going up. However, this is a facility that will be accessible. We're going to do a use agreement with the city for our band, our choir, our drama, for all ages, that we will have access to this world-class facility without having to use our tax dollars that are going to build classrooms for our students. So that's a win for us in that our students will be able to you can see the facility over there. We can't build something like that for our students in Bixby without sacrificing something else. But the city has stepped up and said, we'll do it. And we'll let students in Bixby use this facility. In addition, we'll be able to to bring in road shows and Broadway style shows. We're looking at a, probably a 12 to 1500 seat capacity for this building, but really a wonderful facility for the downtown area, which will spur commercial growth and development in that area, which again, adds to our ad valorem taxes, adds to our sales tax base, and it's a win-win for both of us. What's it mean for you as a taxpayer? your property values go up because the quality of life in Bixby, not only because of the schools, but now because we have a city where we've got entertainment, we've got commercial development, and we have places to bring our families and be entertained. So I strongly encourage you to consider this to be on the same ballot as our school bond, but it will be a separate. This will not affect school taxes, but it will affect your military if you're a citizen of Bixby. And I think our next slide. And this is the next step. So we obviously are hoping that this bond issue passes. It's critically important for our community, for our school district, that we're able to continue this growth, continue this progress, continue that vision of being a world-class school district, best school district in the state of Oklahoma. And we need your help to get us across that line. But as we move forward, like I said to start, our planning for the next bond issue has really already started. But we'll certainly start in earnest after this one passes. Because we know we need to continue to fulfill our promises to you and to the rest of our community to make sure that we have high quality classrooms Places for teaching and learning. Places for athletic and fine arts. And so we're going to continue this investment. And likely in 2028, we'll have a new bond issue. Some of the projects that may be on there, we'll certainly finish the Spartan Athletic Complex, the expansion of the stadium, possibly a new field house. We'll have to see what things look like in a few years. And then you notice up here on number two, we're going to need to go back out with another demographic study in a, in a few years and see where our growth is and if it looks like we're going to need to have another elementary school in 2030 or 2031 for us to move forward and take those first steps. So it's a very comprehensive process. We're trying to stay ahead of our growth as much as we can, but it takes a lot of planning and it takes a commitment from all of you, our taxpayers and our families who have done such a wonderful job of supporting Bixby schools for many, many years. 
with that, I'm going to open it up for questions. I know we've got some people online who are, who are monitoring.